Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today I am sharing a tutorial on how to scale any formulation up or down, and also how to take a formulation that was not originally presented in percents, so maybe something that was a combination of weights and volume measurements or whatever, and then we're gonna turn that into a formulation that is presented in percents, because once it's in percents, that's when we can scale it. If you don't like math, don't worry, we are making a spreadsheet do all of the math for us. It's fantastic. <laughs> there is a Humble Bee and Me blog post on this topic that actually predates the Humble Bee and Me YouTube channel, so I'll link to that in the description box below. There's a helpful downloadable spreadsheet there that you can use, and then I will also link to a more involved blog video pairing that I have on DIYing and formulating with spreadsheets that kind of takes this and really like runs with it. Uh, and there's a lot of great information there. Before we dive into the tutorial, I do want to touch on a couple important things. Important thing number one is that we absolutely have to be working with weights. And I do a demonstration a little later in the video that really drives home how variable volume measurements can be, which really helps or sort of put clear glasses on <laughs> why it's so important to work in weights rather than volume measurements. Important thing number two is that you do have to scale everything in a formulation when you scale it up or down. I'm sometimes asked if ingredients like preservatives, emulsifiers, or essential oils are exempt from scaling, and I kind of get it because when a formulation calls for something like 20 grams of an essential oil, that can seem like it's just way too much, but of course there's a lot of everything if the formulation needs 20 grams of essential oil and so it's all relative so imagine if you were baking and you were like making a cookie recipe and you increased everything by 10 times except the sugar you now only have 10 percent of the sugar that you should have had in those cookies and those cookies are probably going to taste terrible so yeah Make sure when you're scaling something up or down, you scale everything. There are no ingredients that are exempt from scaling. And then thing number three is I really do recommend making sure you have quite a precise scale. I really like using something that's accurate to two decimal points of a gram and would generally consider something that's accurate to one decimal point of a gram to be the bare minimum. As you'll see later in the video, when you convert a formulation that was just done in weights into percentages, those numbers can be pretty hairy and that level of precision can really quickly become very important, especially if you're making smaller batch sizes. All right, I think that's enough chat. Please make sure you are reading the partner blog post and checking out the bigger, more involved one on DIYing and formulating the spreadsheets because there's tons of great information in there. But yeah, come on, let's get started. So here we are on the computer ready to convert this peppermint cocoa lip balm into percentages so we can scale it to our heart's content. So you can see I first shared this formulation all the way back in 2013, and if we scroll down, you'll see that it's mostly in weights, uh, but we do have a drop measurement here as well. So we are going to start by entering kind of what we have, the information that we have into this spreadsheet. So this is just a Google Sheets spreadsheet, and I've just made three columns here, weight, ingredients, and percentages. So we'll start by entering in what we've got, and then we'll enter in the weight measurements that we have. And so you'll notice I'm not indicating a unit. It doesn't matter as long as it's all the same units. Uh, so, you know, you wouldn't want it to be like 10 ounces of beeswax and then 12 grams of coconut oil. That's no good. It needs to all be in the same units. But if you wanted to do this by ounces or pounds or kilograms or whatever, that will work too. So now we need a weight measurement for 20 drops of peppermint essential oil. And the way to get this is to go and weigh out 20 drops of peppermint essential oil and then note that weight. I've got a bottle of peppermint essential oil here and a nice precise scale with an empty dish on it. I'm going to count out 20 drops. And then I'm going to write down this number so we can use it in our conversions. So what do you do if the formulation called for something like a tablespoon of beeswax? That's a little bit trickier. Drops aren't a super reliable size, but chunks of beeswax and how many will fit into a tablespoon is even less reliable. So for something like this, what I'd recommend doing is taking a few measurements and then taking the average of that. So I've got a, another clean dish here. This is not the one that has peppermint essential oil in it. Clean tablespoon. And so what I'm gonna do is kind of weigh out a tablespoon sort of to the best of my ability and then pop that back in there. And I'm gonna do this like five times 
so that we can start to get you know, an average weight of what a tablespoon of beeswax is. And that right there, that was 0.31 grams different from the first measurement. So that starts to give you a really good idea of why um, volume measurements aren't ideal for formulating at all. That right there, that's almost two grams more than our first measurement. And a measurement error like that could make or break a formulation. And with all that data recorded, we can head back to the computer. All right, back from the studio. Now we have a weight measurement to drop in for the peppermint essential oil. So I will refer to my notes and enter that there. And now we are ready to convert this to percentages. But before we do that, I wanted to show you how you would average out the weight of the beeswax that we measured out. So over here, we can just get set up. So we've got a bunch of different weights I just weighed out one tablespoon of beeswax. And so kind of, we I, I did this five times. I was even surprised at how much this varied. I've never worked with beeswax by the tablespoon. And the variation in these measurements was large enough that you could end up with drastically, drastically different products between batches if you were going by the tablespoon. So those are all of our different values and like, oh my gosh, look at the difference, like 6.24 down to 4.41 and kind of everything in between. So we can select all of those and then we can come over here and click the little function thing and then average. And so that means that, you know, the average weight of a tablespoon of beeswax is 5.288 grams. And so if this uh, formulation had originally called for like one tablespoon of beeswax, then we would enter 5.288 instead of one tablespoon. And so yeah, for chunkier ingredients, that's definitely the way you're gonna wanna do it because the, the scope for variation is just so large. So to turn this set of weights into percentages, I'm going to select this set of um, weights and then we're going to sum. So we're gonna add that up. And so the total batch size is 49.7 four grams. Now to turn that to percentages. So we're going to hit equals and then A2. So that is the weight value of the beeswax out of, and then we're going to use dollar signs here for A8. And so that's out of the total batch. So this is generating our percentage. It's, it's 10 for the beeswax out of the total batch size and hit enter. And then look at that. It knows what we're trying to do. So Yes, that's correct. Now those are some gnarly looking numbers. Uh, so I'm gonna select this column here and format it as percentages. And so we start to get, you know, percentages. So we can see this is 20.1% beeswax, 24.13% coconut oil, 14.07% cocoa butter, and sort of so on and so forth. And so there are our percentages. This can be a good time to kind of polish up your numbers a little bit. So I'm going to just copy this down here and let's see here. So I think 20, not going to be a big difference between 20 and 20.1%. 20 um, and then let's see here, we'll do 24.1, you do 14.1, uh, start with 38, 2%. And then I'm just going to quickly add this up. So 98.2%, so that leaves room for 1.8% peppermint essential oil if we wanted to do that. But then it's also worth considering that 1.8% peppermint essential oil is, is a lot. I would prefer to see that closer to uh, 1% for sort of safety and responsible usage reasons. And then 2% uh, vitamin E is way more than we need. And so this is sort of another awesome reason to be working in percentages. Uh, when you have one gram, that doesn't sound like a lot, but once you set it into the context of the entire formulation in percentages, you start to be like, that's a lot. Uh, so really only like half a percent is needed. Uh, so now we have a little bit of extra room to make up. Both of these ingredients are liquid. So I'll be topping them off with sort of the almond oil and the coconut oil. So I think pull that up to 40% uh, and then and call that there. And now we have 100%. So 
that uh, that last step is not strictly necessary, especially you know if you're already very happy with the formulation. But it's just really interesting how when you convert a formulation into percentages, things become a lot clearer than they are when they're just a bunch of weights. So now we have this formulation in percentages, ingredient percent. So now we can scale it very, very easily. And so we're going to let the spreadsheet do all of that math for us. Uh, so let's say we wanted to make a 50 gram batch or a 50 anything batch. That could be a 50 pound batch, but I don't recommend that. <laughs> That's a lot of lip balm. So now we're going to uh, hit enter and then we're going to lock this uh, 50 in, so that's D13. And so the dollar signs mean that when you extend the formulation down, uh, it stays D13 and it doesn't sort of shift with the uh, cells. And then we're gonna multiply that times this percentage number. And then look at that, it knows what we're trying to do. Cheers, thank you. Uh, so there we go. And so you can see if you're looking at the formulation up here, each of these still calls in D13 because we locked it in. If we hadn't done that, if we just sort of done equals D13 times the beeswax and we hit check marks, you can see these values are different because then it's calling in D14, which is now the uh, beeswax amount. And so that's that's not correct. So yeah, it's important that you, you throw the dollar signs in there. And now you have scalable values for everything. And so you can change this number to like anything you want. If you wanted to make one tube of lip balm, 4.5 grams, you can do that. Uh, for really tiny batches like that, you may want to be increasing decimal points for better uh, accuracy. But yeah, that's that's that. You know, you can very easily scale your formulations once you have everything in percentages by weights. So yeah, that. That's it. That is how easy it is to scale a formulation up or down and how to take a formulation that was done in weights and maybe volume measurements and convert it into something that uses percentages so that you can you know, make more, make less, and get reliable results every time. It's also worth keeping in mind that if you are polishing up your numbers as I did in this formulation today, you might need to do a little bit of iterating and tweaking to get the formulation to right where you want it. So yet another good reason to be able to scale your formulations. You know, if you're just making five or 10 grams at a time, it it's a lot faster and a lot less wasteful to iterate a bunch of different versions to get the formulation just so. And then because you've done it in percentages by weights, when you get it just so at 10 grams, you can also get it just so at 100 grams or 1,000. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you are checking out the partner blog post. I'll link to that in the description box below. There is a spreadsheet there that you can download and use to enter your formulations in for easy converting. But yeah, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.